Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about what vaccinations can be given to pregnant women. The information in this video has been derived from various sources, which includes the World Health Organization, the British Association for Sexual Health and HIV, the March of Dimes Guidelines, Center for Disease Control Guidelines for Vaccination, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, the National Health Service, and some information about local guidelines. All these vaccines may or may not be available locally. However, this video has been prepared to gain knowledge of vaccines available globally and their use during pregnancy. So vaccines are an important part of staying healthy because it lowers the chances of getting certain preventable diseases. Pregnant women and their newborns are especially at risk of getting sick because the newborn's immune system is not fully developed and any protection that the mother can give to the newborn is welcome. When pregnant women get vaccinated, it helps to protect them and their antibodies pass to their babies through the placenta, which can keep the babies safe from illnesses, especially in the first three to six months of life. Pregnant women are at increased risk for severe complications from some diseases, which include influenza, in comparison with non-pregnant women and the general population. So the recommendations are that influenza immunization is recommended for all pregnant women as part of routine prenatal care in each pregnancy during influenza season. The immunization can be offered as early as possible and can be administered in any trimester. However, the live attenuated influenza vaccine is not recommended for any age group or population. As far as tetanus is concerned, this, this is available in a combined form of tetanus, toxoid, diphtheria toxoid, and acellular pertussis immunization. It is recommended once during each pregnancy, including in women with prior vaccination. The optimal time for vaccination is between 27 and 36 weeks with ideal administration as early as possible in that window to maximize passive neonatal immunity. Pregnant women in special circumstances in which vaccine will be indicated include if there is a wound, if there is an outbreak of whooping cough. In such cases, immediate vaccination should be provided according to guidelines. If a booster is indicated at any time in pregnancy, pregnant women should be provided with the immunization. The respiratory syncytial virus has recently now been recommended for pregnant individuals at 32 through 36 weeks gestational age for the prevention of lower respiratory tract disease and severe lower respiratory tract disease caused by RSV in infants from birth through six months of age. So giving the vaccination to the mother will provide antibodies which will pass on to the fetus and will protect the fetus up to the age of six months. So as observed earlier, pregnancy is not a reason to avoid vaccines and hepatitis A vaccine can be given during pregnancy if the risk of getting hepatitis A is higher than the potential risk from the vaccine. This may apply to pregnant women who are traveling to places with a higher risk of hepatitis A. Pregnant women who have been exposed to individuals with hepatitis A virus infection and have not previously been immunized should receive post-exposure prophylaxis. Immune globulin does not pose a risk in pregnancy and exposed pregnant women should receive both immune globulin 
and the vaccine as soon as possible after exposure. Hepatitis B vaccine is an inactivated recombinant DNA vaccine and is highly effective at preventing infection. Pregnancy is not a contraindication to hepatitis B vaccine immunization to women who are at risk of infection. Although the safety data on this vaccine is limited, there is no reported cases of fetal anomalies or developmental concerns. And the rates of preterm labor and stillbirth in vaccinated in comparison to the unvaccinated group is similar, indicating there is no risk to the unborn fetus. So the recommendation is that hepatitis B vaccine immunization should be given to pregnant women who are at risk of infection. Pregnancy is not a contraindication to the vaccine. Routine put prenatal screening for hepatitis B surface antigens is recommended to detect whether antibodies are present or not, and if there are any carriers, and to ensure neonatal immunoprophylaxis at birth if needed. Hemophilus influenza type B immunization continues to be recommended routinely in children under the age of five years, and is also recommended for adults at increased risk for invasive infection disease due to chronic conditions which include sickle cell disease, leukemia, HIV, or functional asplenia. The haemophilus influenza type B vaccine is an inactive conjugate vaccine and therefore presents a low risk for maternal or fetal harm. Initial small studies on this vaccination in the third trimester demonstrated safety for both the mother and for the newborn baby. So due to the limited data of evidence and limited use of this vaccine in pregnancy, there is currently no recommendation on the use of haemophilus influenza type B vaccination during pregnancy. But however, this is one vaccine that can also be considered in very high risk women. Meningococcal disease is a infection which can occur if you go to crowded areas and where the risk of respiratory infections is high in dormitories or individuals with either complement uh, deficiencies, functional or anatomic asthenia. In women who have HIV infection or those who are exposed to disease in an outbreak. All meningococcal vaccines are inactivated and therefore low risk for adverse outcomes in pregnant women or their offspring. So the recommendations are that pregnant women at increased risk for meningococcal disease be immunized according to existing adult recommendations. Although no risk of immunization has been identified, the potential risk of disease exposure should be balanced against the theoretical risk of vaccine administration. Streptococcus pneumonia and pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccines. Streptococcus pneumonia is a gram positive bacterium that results in pneumonia, bacteremia, meningitis, and otitis media. Routine immunization in pregnancy is not recommended by the Center of Disease Control in the United States as there is insufficient data on the safety of this vaccination in the first trimester. However, it appears to be safe for the second or the third trimester. And some a systematic review has shown no difference in fetal outcomes in women who are vaccinated as compared to those who are not vaccinated by this particular vaccine. So pregnancy is not a contraindication to immunization against streptococcus pneumoniae, but there is no guideline published regarding the use of this in pregnancy. Now we come to certain vaccinations which are important for women who are traveling. So anthrax is only recommended for individuals at highest risk of exposure. 
and these include military populations, environmental investigators, postal processing staff, and individuals with laboratory exposure. Given the low risk of anthrax exposure, pre-event immunization is not recommended for pregnant women as the benefit of immunization does not outweigh the theoretical risk of immunization. Japanese encephalitis is caused by a virus which is borne by a mosquito and it is the leading cause of vaccine preventable encephalitis in our part of the world. Due to the lack of safety data, immunization should generally be avoided in pregnant women. On the other hand, rabies, which affects the central nervous system leading to death if left untreated, is a situation where vaccination should be provided in case of animal bite, as pregnancy is not a contraindication to rabies immunization. Other vaccinations which may be recommended during travel include typhoid. Pregnant women are advised not to travel to areas with high rates of endemic typhoid. The live attenuated typhoid vaccine should not be administered in the pregnancy. If immunization is considered, then it will be with the inactivated virus and uh, here also the risk of acquiring the disease significantly outweighs the theoretical risk of immunization. Under these conditions, the vaccine can be given. Yellow fever is also a mosquito-borne RNA flavivirus that usually results in asymptomatic infection. Although rare, severe disease is associated with high mortality rate due to multi-organ failure. The yellow fever vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine and therefore confers a small risk of reversion to a virulent state. Certain live vaccines have also been demonstrated to cross the placenta. Yellow fever is the only live vaccine that is not contraindicated for pregnant women. So if pregnant women are going to an or traveling to an area which is, has endemic yellow fever, then it is the only vaccine which has a uh, which or which has a live virus, but an attenuated live virus, and that can be given to the pregnant woman. So there are certain vaccines which are recommended before and after pregnancy, but not during pregnancy. These include measles and mumps, which are para mixoviruses that are transmitted through direct person to person contact. The Center for Disease Control in the United States recommends that certain at-risk groups, including college and graduate students, international travelers, healthcare professionals, and non-pregnant women remain up to date with their measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines. Due to the theoretical risk of live attenuated vaccines, this is contraindicated during pregnancy. However, no safety concerns have been identified after inadvertent rubella or MMR vaccination in pregnancy. The polio virus, which can cause poliomyelitis, is a crippling and a deadly infection. It has all been eradicated from the world, but continues to circulate in several countries. No adverse effects of this immunization for pregnant women or their fetuses has been observed. So immunization with oral polio vaccine, which is a live attenuated vaccine, continues to be used in many parts of the world. Varicella zoster virus is the herpes virus that causes chickenpox and shingles. It is highly contagious and transmitted by direct contact with skin lesions of an infected person or through inhalation of aerosolized particles. Ideally, non-immune women should be identified and vaccinated prior to pregnancy. Pregnant women who are identified as varicella non-immune should be immunized immediately postpartum and prior to discharge from the healthcare facility. A second dose should be administered at the postpartum visit 
four weeks after the initial dose. So in the end, we will summarize our discussion on vaccination during pregnancy. Women of reproductive age should check, check the immunization status and get any recommended vaccines as per adult immunization schedules. Obviously, it depends greatly on what vaccines are available locally. In general, inactivated immunization presents a low risk for adverse outcomes in pregnant women and their offspring. With the exception of yellow fever and smallpox, live vaccines are relatively contraindicated in pregnancy. All live vaccines should be avoided during pregnancy unless the risk of disease exposure exceeds the potential risk of immunization. Maternal immunization has been demonstrated to be a safe an effective strategy for protecting both pregnant women and their infants from severe vaccine preventable disease, including influenza and pertussis. The RSV or the respiratory syncytial virus and the tetanus diphtheria and pertussis vaccine are recommended during pregnancy, typically between 27 and 36 weeks. Other vaccines may be needed based on specific situations like health conditions, travel, or work exposures. Most vaccines are safe for breastfeeding women. To boost vaccine rates, prenatal care providers should encourage, stock, and provide vaccines in their offices. Smallpox and yellow fever vaccines are not recommended unless the, the risk of disease is higher than immunization. So any kind of talk on vaccination during pregnancy would be incomplete unless we talked about the COVID vaccine. Even though no guidelines are available as such from large systematic studies, but however, studies are now starting to indicate that even though the COVID-19 vaccine acceptance rate is low amongst pregnant women, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine have each issued guidance which is supportive of offering COVID-19 vaccine to pregnant women. This is to prevent them from getting a dis the disease during pregnancy. With this, we come to the end of the video. If you like the video, then please press the subscribe button. This is important to maintain this channel. Press the like button, send your comments, share with colleagues and friends, and press the bell icon to be notified of future publications. Thank you and goodbye.